Hello, welcome to another episode of Should I Make My Family Watch, which is a podcast where I make people watch shitty stuff so you don't have to, but I think you all end up watching it anyway. So I'm your host, Desiree, and joining me today is, again, Dev Solovey with a winner of a movie, and I don't think I should let you pick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> was uh listen i, I I'll, I'll fully admit i did this for the seo okay there <laughs> i said it i did it for the seo it's election week i knew about this film because uh, uh, another disclaimer i have listened to a, a different podcast about it there's a different podcast that i listen to um it's a youtube channel we are not alive they did a coverage of this film and they were they hated it just as much so if it sounds like I'm I'm copying anything that they say, it's probably because it's somewhere stored in my brain. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how I learned of this film. So, well, this film being President Evil, which I was very disappointed to learn was had nothing to do with zombies or like anything related to Resident Evil, which I felt like would have been a perfect segue into that. Yeah, no, this is the Donald Trump slasher film. It's, uh, I'm not sure why they felt the need to make these kinds of things back in 2018. This was released in 2018, and that is important context because the discourse before COVID about Donald Trump was very, very different. <laughs> uh, no, I would agree yeah. with yeah, as I was saying to you uh, before we started recording, it feels like an extended SNL sketch. Uh, and it was just like um, a lot of the scenes were parodies of various horror movies, particularly a lot of them were parodies from Halloween. There was also mm -hmm. one I, I caught that was um, uh, matched uh, one of those scenes in Psycho um, with the guy falling down the stairs. And yeah. Gets killed. Yeah, so this wasn't really a film that was made for like plot or quality or um, having anything interesting to say. Uh, it was just kind of a self-indulgent extended SNL bit made by SNL liberals who thought saying, ha ha, Donald Trump fat was going to change the world. <laughs> And I think I probably should have kept that context in mind going into it, but I decided to throw it on uh, it, as like the bedtime movie you're laying in bed watching. I'm like, oh, I got, I can finish this. I'm not tired. Uh, no, I was like, I was physically uncomfortable watching it. Yeah. Like it had a physical reaction in me and it did not get better. And I was like, this has got to be just no. me. It made me very I uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. So I remember you saying you didn't finish this one. Nope. This is the yeah. only movie this season that I have DNF'd. Nope. Yeah. Uh, so you're first... carrying us, us home on this one. Yeah. Whereas I almost didn't finish twice. The first time I, I almost rage quit on it was in the scene where those two, quote, rednecks come in and start, like, just saying weird racist shit but then say like we've never read the constitution i'm like really the thing that's posted in every classroom <laughs> like, yeah. that we learn about no matter what part of the states you live in like it was very classist and i've always hated like as okay disclaimer as well like i'm a very 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 left-wing person and so a lot of my commentary on this film is going to come from that lens listener so that you know that but I really do think that classism is as bad a form of bigotry as any other type, because in a system like this, you don't get to choose to be poor and you're probably going to die poor if you are born that way. Um, so it's not like, a, oh, work hard enough and you'll make it. Like the way things are built are designed to keep you poor and uneducated. And so this kind of coastal elite, again, like bad SNL writers sort of contemptuous view of rural people that they are uneducated and racist like like racism is an accent and not a mm -hmm. you know a trait that people are um uh, that that is learned you know so I, I just i hate that 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 kind of classism really bums me out especially because it's so intertwined with other forms of bigotry so that was the first part i almost didn't finish and then the second part is the part where the quote trans guy is introduced <laughs> Because it was so cringe. 
for so many reasons. Uh, one of them being he's played by a cis guy, <laughs> which I know because there was a point where he was saying like this, this guy was apparently in the military and took a bullet for somebody. And um, the kid whose name is Pepe, of course, asks if he can see the bullet wound and he opens his shirt and shows it to him. And uh, he's, he, he doesn't have tits <laughs> and he doesn't have a binder and he doesn't have top surgery scars for people who are aren't aware. Uh, if you're female to male trans person, you usually have breasts and there are two ways you make that disappear, either through a compression top mm -hmm. or through surgery. And like, neither of those things are present. And so I was like, why'd you do this? Yeah. <laughs> what is this here? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm very glad I watched uh, fanfic before watching this film because I, I feel a lot better now having, se <laughs> having seen that first. <laughs> well, that one sounds like it was a good movie, though, not like a shitty one. So, yeah, sorry, yeah, um, it was. Yeah, I talked about this in the previous episode where I, I spoke with Kirsten. But basically, I realized that, like, I had never seen a movie with a trans man in it before. And mm -hmm. this is a point of discourse. Like, a lot of the time, you know, representation of trans people in media usually focuses around trans women. Um and it, I think it's because like some part of the cultural psyche just thinks we don't exist. Like there's that uh, idea that being trans is some kind of like sex fetish thing. And that's usually ascribed towards men. And so they usually think of trans people as like men in dresses, you know, mm -hmm. and obviously that's just not how it is. And um, so like people just kind of don't think trans men exist. And I think that's why there's so few movies that we are in. And the ones yeah. that do exist are like documentaries or they're played by cisgender women. So yeah, I, I knew there was a trans guy going into this because I had listened to that podcast. And so I was like, I don't want this to be my the first time I ever see myself represented on screen. Let me just find a good movie with a trans guy in it. And um, yeah, fanfic is good. It's not my genre. I don't really care for coming of age films, but it represents the experience very accurately. Um, so praise for that. Anyway. That was a tangent. I know. I know you wanted to keep this forty-five minutes. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I feel like I mean we're not going to have much in the way of plot to try to offer. Like I, yeah. but I was agreeing with you in my brain. I'm like trying to think of of movies with authentic trans representation, and I Ain't can't none. think of any. I can't Ain't think of any. any. Yeah, in in my search, I found maybe twenty movies, uh, and of them with trans characters played by trans men, I found two. One was fanfic and the other was called By Hook or By Crook. It was made in the 2000s. I thought like um, you just said By Hooker and I was like, oh, <laughs> I feel oh, like maybe no. no. <laughs> I might've gotten the title wrong, honestly. I can't remember it exactly, but I know it was also, it might've been directed or written by the trans guy who stars in the film. And then there, I mean, obviously there are more like queer up and coming, you know, artists right now that uh, more people are, are sort of realizing this about themselves and now that there's a conversation about it, there's going to be more queer people mm. in media just kind of in general. But anyway, um, the basic broad strokes, like the, this really, the, this movie wasn't made to have a plot. It was made to be joke after joke after joke at Donald Trump's expense. And there were the kinds of jokes that the sort of blue checkmark liberals on Twitter we're telling a lot mm -hmm. because, or, or, you know, like that, um, that episode of last week tonight where he's talking about how like, you know, uh, Donald Trump's real last name is Drumpf. And if we just call him that, that'll show him, you know, it kind of yeah. like that mentality of just like, yeah, if we call him gay or if we call him fat, it's going to make him not want to be president anymore. If we say his hands are tiny or make fun of the way he that's, misspells his tweets. Like <laughs> that's a hard thing for me because like, I, I hate Donald Trump. Please don't ever yeah. read me any other way than that. But when you're making some making fun of someone's physical appearance or using that as the reason why they are not worthy for whatever it is, you know, we're talking about, I don't yeah. think that's fair. It's no. it's it's weak. It's not a strong opinion well, to go off of. Yeah, and also think of it this way, like you can make a mean post on Facebook or a mean tweet or whatever making fun of donald trump's weight donald trump is never going to see that tweet you know who will your friends mm -hmm. some of whom are fat 
and now they know that you view them in this contemptuous light mm -hmm. because they are fat. So you're not hurting Donald Trump, you're just hurting the people around you <laughs> by not showing basic human decency because that's the problem with basic human decency that some people don't seem to get is that you do have to show it even to people who don't deserve it because otherwise it yes. crumbles. You see, you, you have to set a precedent, right? It like I, I, I don't like Caitlyn Jenner, but I'm still going to call her Caitlyn Jenner, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good point. You know, like, it's, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, so this, broad strokes, this movie is about um, their stand-in for Putin, Dr. Luton, trying to raise oh, the Antichrist. I didn't put that together. I was trying to figure out who he was supposed to be. <laughs> Oh, I I figured it was, he said collusion. He said the word collusion, and that's I why. know. I was rack. I, dude, I haven't been with it today. I was racking yeah. my brain trying to figure that out. Now I feel really dumb. I mean, this is based on the politics of six years ago. I might not have gotten that reference if he didn't say collusion. Um, it rhymes. Was, I'm pretty sure you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he. But he was trying to raise the antichrist because, of course, this was made by people who think Trump is the antichrist when, in reality, he's just a guy. <laughs> yeah, just a very problematic guy. He's kind of just your racist uncle, and like that's. He's it's just a symptom of a larger problem. Uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Everybody's got a family member like him that you're like, just don't, yeah. you know. Just walk he's away like, at Christmas time. Yeah, he's the one shitty guy who, like, you don't invite to your wedding for a reason. And, like, that's just kind of the reality. Like, yeah, you know? So it's he, he's a symptom of a larger issue, for sure. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, no, the guy sucks. He shouldn't have been president, but he was. And it wasn't due to Russian collusion. That's a conspiracy theory. Hate to burst your bubble, uh snl liberals like it's <laughs> people voted for him and that's that's just the reality and nobody wanted to believe it but they did and um yeah also th there was this other this this other thing that really bothered me uh again as someone who is like very 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 far left i don't like obama i felt that the nostalgia over obama once trump was elected was unwarranted and maybe it's just because I have like personal beef with him because a he's the one who started the border camps and ICE and all that, and I live in a border town, so that's mm -hmm. like right in my backyard. Those atrocities being committed every day, and it's horrendous. And then there's also the fact that he just fucking blanketed the Middle East in in missiles, and mm -hmm. uh, those missiles were built in my backyard because Raytheon is based in Tucson. And so, like, all these, like, awful crimes he's committed against people, like, innocent people, it, it seems like um, the blue checkmark liberals just sort of forgot about that. And they were like, oh, Obama was a class act. I'm like, no, he was just a president who committed war crimes. Like, same as every other president. They all commit exactly. war crimes. Every other and that's why I, he was a classy war criminal. And that's the difference. We like yeah, our but, war criminals classy. <laughs> Donald I just Trump, class it up a little bit. Maybe everybody would get on board. Probably not. The, just maybe. The, no, but I hear what you're saying. I agree. The reason I wanted to bring it up is because, like, one of the other scenes that made me have to mute the movie for a while and just watch it silently with captions is um, there's this part where so so the the cast is um, people from different demographics whom. Uh, Donald Trump had made policies that actively harmed, right? And so they have like a Muslim girl, they have a Haitian girl, they have a Mexican uh, DACA recipient and so on and so forth. And so there's this scene where it's these two gals in their car, um, the uh, Mexican DACA recipient gal and then the Muslim gal who ended up being the, the final girl. And they're listening to like a speech by Obama uh, or like an Obama um, uh, impersonator who says a bunch of stuff that Obama never said. Uh, about like endorsing the rights of trans people and stuff like that, which yeah. by the way, he wasn't even affirming of gay marriage when he got into office in 2008. Again, your nostalgia is misplaced. Um, but yeah, so he starts saying all this stuff and then Donald Trump comes on and one of the gals says, I miss Obama. And I'm like, really? You're going to have a Mexican person and a Middle Eastern person say that they miss Obama after you know, the two things that I just mentioned about the bombs and the border camps. So it's like it, that, that felt 
awful. It was that it was that and the, the two rednecks um who were just clearly played by Californians. They didn't even do the accent right either. <laughs> well, and also where were they supposed to be that these two rednecks would have come from? Like I know. <laughs> but no, I agree with you. I it did bother me that they picked like the people who were not benefiting from the previous presidential set and were not going to be benefiting from the next one either to be the ones who were like gung ho about Obama and yeah. not Trump. Like, yeah, we all hate Trump, but that doesn't like most, I mean, you're right. I can't think of anyone who was super jazzed about Obama living in the, you know, the lower yeah. poor areas. Like it, it seemed yeah. very, I don't know what, I guess I know what they were trying to do. They were just writing about it from where they were, which is nowhere near where all this stuff is actually happening. So yeah, the term yeah, I've heard to describe like the rich liberals from California is the coastal elite, which kind of <laughs> makes sense. The, you <laughs> know, the SNL, <laughs> as I call them, the SNL liberals or like the John Oliver liberals or whatever. Not to, I, not to throw shade at John Oliver. I think what he does is good communication. You know, if, if it gets people into more left-wing or progressive ways of thinking, fine, you know, whatever, great. Um, but yeah, there's just this, this flavor of like, um, moderate liberal where they kind of like think that they're sort of counterculture but really they're just kind of like they're kind of status quo like they, they think they're more radical than they are and mm -hmm. they end up making movies like this uh <laughs> it's just it's not very good. I, I also I didn't like that they named the slasher character after his son yeah so interestingly there's two angles that you could take on that one is it's named after his son two is the more niche sort of donald trump lore uh where in the 80s apparently he had a um pseudonym that he would go by he, he would call himself like john Barron and pretend that he john Barron was his publicist but it was clearly just him but like he'd pretend to be this other it. guy yeah yeah, or maybe it was like David Barron or something. Um, okay. but yeah, but that that could be a reference to the fact that he used to pretend to be his own publicist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. which, well, yeah, that makes it less skeezy if I feel like they didn't do it after his kid, because like leave the kids out of it, man. He's gonna have yeah. enough trouble when he hits eighteen. Okay. Yeah, it's not it's not great. There was also a stand-in for Jared Kushner in there somewhere, but I couldn't remember where it was they also did um if if you thought that uh like having um like a trans guy who was some kind of war hero but not being played by an actual trans man was bad um they uh their attitude towards queer people is even worse because the way they like show the connection between the putin stand-in and um the trump slasher is like there's one part where they do the do a gag that makes it look like they're um, having gay sex, like against a tree, like, oh. like um, yeah, like Putin is fucking him from behind or something. But then you turn around and like he's actually just stretching up against the tree, but like the angle is made to look that way, and it's like, wow, yeah, like <laughs> I know, like I thought as a culture we had finally moved past calling people gay as an insult, but apparently not. Also, like it, it had almost the flavor of like um, the the kind of jokes people would make about Bush too, because when, when Bush was in office, a lot of the jokes about him were like, "Ha ha, he said nuclear." Ha ha, he can't say a word right. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, it's like th there was a period of time when everybody's personality was being a grammar Nazi, and so like this one guy sees graffiti on a headstone. And it's like not spelled right. And he spends I didn't like see that part. <laughs> yeah, he spends an agonizing amount of time just like editing the graffiti as if yeah. that fucking matters. <laughs> like yes. it is so stupid. I it's did think that the, the scorchy was it scorchy mix something or whatever they yeah. yeah as the mother of the so like that that part worked. If you're gonna do a Halloween spoof fine a political one but you really lost it like when you every time you stepped away from that s spoof scene i guess i thought yeah and if there wasn't more of that in the end i just don't think it would have i don't think it worked also they really didn't need 
to do the gag of her having fake breasts and them exploding. It, you yeah. didn't need to do that. Um, I felt like that scene was really misogynistic when I watched yeah. it. I couldn't explain it. It just portrayed her in this extremely contemptuous light. And that, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about the Stormy Daniels uh, um, situation, but if she was suing him, she was suing him for a reason. Like he probably mistreated her in some way. And so to portray her as this kind of like gold digger uh, who is, traumatized her son to the point of him becoming a slasher is, it, yeah, uh, it's just really gross. Ugh, also, man. the her lover in that one was like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, it was just racist in general, like very the name, the actions. It was it was a uh, I can't think stereo. No, stereotypical is not the word, but like definitely insulting. I was like, oh wow, yeah. we're going this way right in the beginning. Yeah, this movie is proof or something. Yeah, this oh. movie is proof that even liberals can be racist. Nobody's yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Nobody's ever been immune to that. <laughs> I think that's what made me so uncomfortable. Like it did not yeah. make me feel good. I didn't think it was funny and and it's funny you keep bringing up John Oliver cuz you and I both know how how uh, you feel about him and how I feel about him. I actually don't know how you feel about him. <laughs> I like John Oliver, but I stopped watching him around elections because he just takes it to the 47 millionth degree and it's not educational and it's not funny and it's not correct sometimes too. Yeah. So I thought John Oliver was funny. And when he showed up in your work, I was like, Oh, fun. You know, kind of. Yeah. I will say like the reason I, I may not always enjoy John Oliver's delivery, but I do admire what he's doing, even if he doesn't admire what he's doing, because sometimes he's just like, it's just comedy. You shouldn't be getting your information here. But I'm like, here's the thing. You're presenting valuable information yeah. in a way that's palatable to the masses. And doing that is extremely important because the fact of the matter is, yes, maybe people should do their own research, but they're not going to because they don't have the time they don't have the attention span. Yeah. I like I I'm the kind of person who does do my own research. I do check the sources and frequently I run into academic sources that are just so imparsably formal that I can't understand what they're saying. It's, that's why people need communicators. I think John Oliver is a fantastic one. I you know 10 years ago I, I would have been the kind of person who got my information from that source. So I I'm ambivalent about him. There is a certain kind of audience that he draws though if you catch mm -hmm. my meaning <laughs> no absolutely he makes it accessible and sometimes yeah. accessible to people who maybe it shouldn't be maybe yeah people who need to put a little bit more thought into something before they act on yeah. it yeah you should so. always get your information from multiple sources you shouldn't just be getting it from john oliver or just from adam conover or insert stand-up comedian podcast here you know or fox news or... <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of like the same just opposite side you know what i mean and i i that sounds stupid when i say that because i like john oliver but it is sort of the same like setup just the opposite direction yeah yeah everyone has a story that they want to tell a narrative that they want to tell um and you know it depends on the person who's presenting it and all that sort of thing. Just always be critical of your sources of information. I, I think there's like, there's definitely episodes that John Oliver has done that are good. I can't remember what they are at the moment, but since like <laughs> I've had to sit through all of them with my dad, I, I, I know there were some that I enjoyed. So yeah, anyway, I, that's a tangent. <laughs> I, there's, there's good SNL sketches too. Yeah. Not usually, but they <laughs> Six in the box was a good one. That one comes up every Christmas time. Uh, to this day, uh, Christopher Walken cannot go to restaurants because waiters will ask him if he wants more cowbell with that. that uh, was too, yeah, that's a good sketch. I'm sorry, it's funny, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's just yeah. It, this this whole thing very much has the flavor of an SNL sketch, but without the audience and with way too much preaching. Yeah. Yeah, those are the parts that I skipped over as the preaching because I had already heard those talking points so much that I was like, I know exactly what they're going to say. I can skip this. <laughs> you could have pretty much wrote that. Like, you could have yeah. on a napkin been like, here is, you know what I mean? Like, outlined this entire comedy satire movie. 
yeah here's every cringe thing that every like uh upper class person from san francisco tweeted in 2018 oh god that would be <laughs> terrible i would not want to read that this is okay, the one okay. good thing. This is the one good thing that came of COVID is that people realized we had bigger problems to worry about. Like there, the, a, a lot of the discourse was really muddled in the tens. Um, and that's not to say that the, a lot of it wasn't productive. There were some great conversations going on about representation in media and things like that. But also there'd be like discourse wars and there was kind of a resurgence of moral puritanism and and then, you know, there was also kind of the toxic discourse surrounding Donald Trump and how that ultimately fe uh, fed into his supporter base, kind of feeling like they're oppressed, you know, and then that it, it's become like fandom surrounding politicians, basically. But once COVID hit, we had bigger fish to fry. And that's when people started being like, oh, it's not just COVID that's a problem. You know, that's where the George, George Floyd protests happened. Mm -hmm. uh, people are realizing that housing is a problem. The way we approach labor and income is a problem. Um, people are actually talking about useful shit now. And that's the one good thing to come of COVID, <laughs> I think. I think it depends on what day you turn the news on, because sometimes there's nothing useful on oh. there. Yeah, that to be fair, I don't really watch the news anymore because I'm not going to lie, it's a little hard to exist and stay sane when your right to exist is the topic of discourse. Mm -hmm. Um it's and like I already have pretty I'm not going to lie, some pretty shaky mental health. <laughs> So it's just kind of like I have to manage my stress however I can, but that means I I don't really check the news. the The most I ever check the news is like I'll f get sent something from another person, or I'll occasionally check Al, Je Al Jazeera. Um, but that's about it, really. I can't even trust BBC anymore because they're based in the UK, and the UK is even worse about transphobia. So it's just kind of like, you know, what do I do? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's just kind of. It's it's frustrating. You know, actually, let me say something. Let me say something, okay? okay. Sp speaking about transmasculine representation uh, and the fact that I did make an effort to watch fanfic before watching this film. One of the things that fanfic represented really well that doesn't really get talked about when people talk about transphobia is the fact that when you are vis visibly trans and you walk into a room, the topic of discussion instantly becomes trans rights. And it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum they're on, but it becomes that because you're there. And you know that it's because you walked into the room because they wouldn't be talking about it if you didn't, right? And maybe mm -hmm. maybe they're saying things like, yeah, you know, they, they should have the right to use the bathroom or whatever, they should have the right to this, that, or the other thing. But you still feel singled out because again, they're only having this conversation because you're there. And the other problem that occurs in that circumstance is that when they start having this conversation, they never ask for your input. And the reason they don't is because the moment they turn to you and ask, they will have to consciously acknowledge the fact that they did single you out. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to feel guilty about it. So you have to sit there in silence while these people talk in general terms about whether or not you have a right to exist. And this happens in every room you walk into. Yeah. Transphobia isn't always just some guy saying like, oh, you want to be a man? You're going to get a prosthetic penis? It's not always like that. Sometimes it is just like, you know, people talking around you. Being the catalyst listening. for a conversation that they're not letting you be a part of. Exactly, exactly. You feel like um, your existence is inherently political and tying it back to this film, that is how this film portrays each minority. Like, yes, it's based mm -hmm. on the policies that Donald Trump enacted that actively harmed these minorities, but it still um, portrays them in this exploitative manner in, this, uh, in them being inherently political just by existing. Um, and feeling singled out like that every day of your goddamn life is a really terrible feeling uh <laughs> yeah i'm sure I, I, yeah that's see this movie just made me feel gross and bad and i don't like it that's yeah yeah i, I the way i'm choosing to frame it is that 
this is no longer what discourse is like. Well, discourse yeah. is, it, it's different. I'm not going to say that it's better because I don't know because I'm watching the news, but it's not this anymore. Like we now have an idea of what our problems really are. And it's not uh, whether Trump misspells a word in his tweet or which Star Wars character is gay. Uh, we have bigger like fish to fry now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have, I have a special beef with fandom discourse, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, suffice it to say, the world may not be better, but it's going there and it's going to continue going that direction because it has been for hundreds of years and it would be weird if it stopped. So <laughs> that would be weird. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you have to tell me how it ended because I don't know. Um, it ended, everyone got killed uh, in various <laughs> ways. And okay. then the one final girl was the Muslim gal who wasn't wearing a hijab for most of this film because the filmmakers were cowards. Uh, but she picks up a rocket. She picks up a rocket launcher that her transgender brother brought home with him <laughs> from the war. They just let him bring a rocket home. <laughs> he just walks in with a fucking <laughs> bazooka, <laughs> and uh, it, it, this this was that clip that I showed you, the one funny clip in the entire film. Uh, she says a very cringe line when she picks out. She's like, "You're impeached, fucker!" Uh, but then she shoots him with this missile. Cringe, and just but you sent it to me, cackling like a lunatic. <laughs> so clearly, the best like movie line. There it was. wasn't the line itself. The line was just kind of like, "Oh yeah, that's some shit." Uh, one of those blue checkmark liberals would say, but it was just the bad effects combined, like with the fact that like the rocket hit him in a certain way and it didn't like explode on impact. Wait. It just like <laughs> sent him flying, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like flailing through the air. And then there's like a very clearly just like after effects stock explosion. And uh, that will always be funny to me. <laughs> I will say that that clip was uh, entertaining. It was. Yeah. They, there's, there's no joke that will ever be funnier than man fall down. Man fall down or man get punched is always a funny joke. <laughs> so you just kind of humor. Exactly. Like there's a reason clowns throw pies in each other's face. When someone gets unexpectedly punched, it's hilarious. Always. <laughs> so. Sorry. I was just thinking about the worst part of being a clown with the pies in the face is when you have all that whipped cream stuck up your nose and it dries in there and then it smells like uh. sour. <laughs> Well, it's terrible. So if you haven't done it, don't start. It's a terrible experience. Anyway, what what would you rate this? What's the rating? Five. Five, yeah. No, 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 no. 4.9, because I will give this movie one thing. It's better than Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Ugh. <laughs> oh, that's hard. Because I actually fucking finished Winnie the Pooh. Here's the thing, though, like this film knows that it's satire, like it's a silly premise and it committed to the fact that it's a silly premise. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey was a silly premise, but tried to play it serious. Uh, and that's where like 99% of its failures were, along with just its general existence. Uh <laughs> don't understand my like when i think about how much i hate that movie i don't understand why but i literally hate like it makes me want to tear paper up like like a stupid <laughs> child like, like it makes me belligerently angry and i don't have a good reason aside for i just hated every single second it was on my tv i hated it 100 yeah. percent. so i would agree with you on that 4.9 out of 5 <laughs> because if I had to pick one, I wouldn't watch either of them again. They might be <laughs> five or five, but I didn't vote on the other one because I wasn't in that one. But that was a good pick. And I got to find more of the newer ones because people are like, for the most part, everybody hated that movie, with the exception of one author we know who thought it was great. And I was very surprised <laughs> that that was his great pick. And I was like, is he kidding me? Is he joking? But I don't think he is. So I'm not going to name names. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> questionable buddy so uh okay well this is the season finale so what's your 
top five worst. Doesn't even have to be ones on this list that, that has been watched in the show. I would just say top five worst movies you've watched. I I did have a tier list. Let me go grab it because I forgot to bring it with me to my okay. desk. <laughs> All right. I'm back. I wrote it down on the sticky note. Anyway. <laughs> So <laughs> I kind of want to end this off and, and, you know, say my kind of final farewells uh, for this season by doing a tier list of like all the films that I've watched for this, this podcast in terms of both just objective quality versus my personal enjoyment. Okay. Um, Shark Side of the Moon is in its own category. <laughs> <laughs> that one exists in like the the god tier, diamond tier slash hell tier. Like I don't even know. It's it's its own thing. Um, I agree. Yeah, so it it does not make this tier list because it's just a separate thing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but so gosh, how did I rate these? Um, in terms of quality, starting with least bad to most bad, just taking like a preponderance of the evidence. I'd say, like quality-wise, the the least bad was probably Prince of Darkness. Um, you made so many people so bad. I know. I don't know why. It's, <laughs> it's I'm, I'm sorry. Dying. It's just it's not terrible. It's just not Stuck. entertaining. It was kind of boring. Um, You're also a little bit younger, I think, than most of the people that were arguing for this movie. We're between like my age and probably my mom's age because it was kind of a cult classic, but it's not a good one. Like it's it's shitty. It is shitty. Oh no, you're frozen. Okay, I'm gonna pause. Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. Okay, I'll cut that part out. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, Prince of Darkness is just uh. The thing is, it's 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 one big ex expo dump, and mm -hmm. um, that bores me. But some people really like world building. Some people do. I don't know why they do because I'm not a huge fan of that. But like, they really like the uh, intense world building, and they don't care so much for character work. Whereas I'm very much the opposite. Um, so yeah, I can see why. Like, I may not have enjoyed Prince of Darkness, but. I can see why some people like it. They're just the kinds of people who have very, very different tastes for me. Um, so that's that. the least, yeah, I would put that as the least shitty. I can't believe I have to say this, but in terms of like objective quality and again, putting my personal enjoyment out of the way, the second least bad is Death Note 2017. <laughs> really? I can't believe what? I'm saying this, but it is because if you just if you look at the movie alone, the cinematography is really good. The mm -hmm. cast did their best with it. Um, like everything surrounding the film is good. Mm -hmm. It's just that the script was so dog shit that nothing could save it. But if you like take everything outside of the script, like th there was some really good talent that went into that. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to like not give that the credit that it deserves. So. Technically, but your hate should be credit enough. Like, you well, should I have, have a separate list for hate. <laughs> I have a separate list for my personal enjoyment. Okay. Um, so, second least bad. At the middle, I put video violence too, just because like it fucks up in some specific ways. But there were some funny scenes. There were some interesting ideas, and it could have been pulled off better. Uh, the concept was interesting. The execution was bad. So I just put that kind of in the middle. Okay. Um, now we're getting to the worst ones. <laughs> <laughs> so House of the Dead is... I, I put that one sort of in the middle, but it's on the worst end of the middle. Uh, just because it is even to like, you know... Uh, it, it's It's funny. Like it's it's funny to a lot of people, like not just me. It's it's one of those films that some people laugh at. Um, and yes, it sucks, but there were some humorous moments. And I think if you're the kind of person who enjoys watching shitty movies, it can be funny. I know for you it was personal because it was in your backyard. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like how I feel about certain things. But um, yeah, so I, I can see how that one would be an enjoyable bad watch. Um, I'm going to put Blood and Honey as... So, so I've, I have three left, Blood and Honey, Blood Rain, and President Evil. I'm going to put Blood and Honey... Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to put President Evil in the third place because it, it, of that point I mentioned previously about how at least it understands that it's satire. Um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey doesn't understand that it should be satire. So that's my second um, uh, bad one. Okay. Now, the reason I don't put it in first place and the reason I put Blood Rain in first rate place as like the worst movie on this list is because at least the dialogue in Blood and Honey was fucking understandable. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. at least I could understand what was going on in the film. At least it had a plot. Yeah. You know, Blood Rain had nothing. Uh, yeah. It just it was nothing. Like I, you know, like I've listened back to that episode I did with Zach and there are parts where I have to like cringe because I really didn't it seemed like I didn't watch the movie because I just didn't know what happened mm -hmm. and he had to explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the titles? Um, it didn't. No. Oh yeah, that doesn't I, help. Yeah, I I watch uh, everything with subtitles because I just have dog shit hearing. But um, like even you know if I like if I turned off the subtitles for President Evil, which I did occasionally, I could still kind of hear what was being said. Mm -hmm. And like the parts where the Mexican gal was talking in Spanish, the captions didn't bother to translate those, but I could understand them just having heard those words before. So like. Yeah, but Blood Rain had just like the, you know, the audio quality was bad, the costuming quality was bad, the camera quality was all over the place. It didn't have a plot, it had way too many MacGuffin chases. The The cast was great, but they their hearts weren't in it, and you can tell they were just in there for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was no consistency, just everything about it was bad. It didn't have a redeeming quality. The one scene that kind of stuck with me was the ending, but only because it could have been good if it didn't exist in this movie. So like, really there is nothing redeemable about it. Um, objective quality wise. <laughs> now that's my preponderance of the evidence as objective as I can make it. Uh -huh. I have a different tier list for my personal enjoyment. <laughs> okay. Are you sharing so, that one or is that a secret? I'll be sharing that one. Okay. So do you want me to go from like the one I least enjoyed to most enjoyed or the other way around? Let's go least to most. Yeah. Okay. So least I would have to say probably President Evil. Um, uh, just because that one made me like angry and was bad in, in mm -hmm. some really specific ways. Um like next least would be blood and honey uh, because it's just really boring and awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, it's hard to explain why it's bad to people who haven't seen it. It just is very bad. Yes. Um, I also just dislike um, adultification of children's properties in general. Not that it can't be done well. I think Shrek does it very well, but uh, I just, they always mess it up. They always mm -hmm. mess it up and um, they take the wrong approach to it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Blood and Honey, then I'd put Blood Rain because I didn't enjoy that either, but I did enjoy riffing on it, so at least there's that. Um, after that, Death Note 2017 is sort of on the lower end of the middle because, again, I hate it for reasons that I've discussed that I, I discussed with Karina for an hour and 45 minutes, um, but... Uh, it, there were some points where like the cast drew emotional responses out of me and that's more than can be said for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey or Blood Rain or anything like that. So unfortunately I have to give it credit where credit is due. Um, next I'm going to put Prince of Darkness and these are kind of like my upper tiers. So third place for most enjoyed Prince of Darkness, just for that one bit where the guy collapses into bugs. I thought that was really neat. Yeah. That uh, was genuinely, that was a really good effect. Or like, um, I, I just love practical effects like that. Like there's another where this gal, like, you know, her head gets cut, chopped off and she puts it back on. I thought it was interesting how it was um, shot. So credit where credit is due, right? 
Um, number two, I put video violence just because, again, there were clips in there that were funny that did get I mean, a laugh out of me, a genuine reaction, you know? So there was enjoyment there. Um, and one for enjoyment, I did put House of the Dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was really funny. I, I was, again, twice I had to pause just because I was laughing so hard. It was, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's it's problematic in some specific ways, but there are ways that you can kind of like, you can sort of dismiss, especially if you know Uwe Boll mm -hmm. as a person or like if you, you know what he's like. It's just like, oh, yeah, I can tell why this movie is the way it is. <laughs> you know? I feel like the all of the movies over the season have definitely put Uva Bowl in perspective <sighs> for me, like because he's not the worst out there, and I will willingly watch some of these movies again if I had to. So, I guess now I would almost say maybe I'm not quite a fan, but like I'll give him props for being yeah. his own thing. I don't know. As as Zach put it, I wish I had his apathy to criticism. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I would agree with that because he's got to have some thick skin. Because like, yeah, I don't think he does. I think he's just so reactive against his critics that like, and he's like super cocky about it. And I just kind of like, I wish I had that sort of like lack of humility <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> like, I wish you I could take just a, a note from Uva Bowl. I yeah. am trying to run through the list. I have to say, I think my top least enjoyed. Oh, that's really hard. There's been so many really bad ones. I had to watch so many more shits than you did. Yeah, that's true. Um, I thought Vampires on Bikini Beach was severely disappointing. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then yeah, especially I with a title like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I know. I think, and I think my the person I had on the show was really expecting more in the way of boobs, and there wasn't any, so we were both disappointed. Um, <laughs> or the the original one I started off with, which was Resurrection, that had um, who did it have in it? The guy from Highlander. I don't remember his name now. Christopher something. Can't beat that. It doesn't make any sense. It's terrible. But I mean, aside from. This one I just DNF'd because I can't even count this one on the list. I can't. Can't make myself yeah. do it. Yeah, it's not really a movie. Like it's just it's a, uh, an extended SNL bit is all it is yeah. with like way more preaching in it <laughs> and no so audience. I'm gonna pretend like this one didn't enter the the contest here. Doesn't even make the bad list. Uh, but I mean, overall, I have to say, I think. My favorite watch that is Shark Side of the Moon because I'm yeah. still laughing about that. <laughs> but like, or or the one episode I haven't like finished recording that is the missing episode. If you look at the list and it's not in there, is uh, Hell Comes to Frog Town. If you haven't mm -hmm. seen that, I recommend it just for the what the fuckery that will present itself to you. The second right, half, right. you, you gotta hang till the second half. Because okay. if you like uh, practical effects, the second half of the movie is amazing. There is all a right, frog right. stripper. It's, I blew my mind. Best thing I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> I'm so excited awesome. every time that part comes on. That's, it makes me sound weird. I'm not weird. No, and, I mean, with how many fucking jokes I have made about the shark titties and shark side of the moon, I get it. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, funny. I, I think I will watch it again because I want to torture somebody else with that. So I uh, definitely need to like spread this like a plague. Yeah. You can't get me on for that one. Cause it sounds like I'm going to like it. So <laughs> Which one? shark side of the moon. Hell comes to frog town. Oh, uh, I don't, I actually don't know if you will. Maybe. I feel like you will the second half. Cause I hated the first half. It made me angry. The second half, as soon as they brought in that frog stripper, I was like, I am on, I am ready for this. Uh -huh. And my husband okay. thinks I'm weird, but it was like that is the most enjoyable thing I've seen in a shitty movie in so long, just for that. Yeah. No, I I get you. Like I'm always in search of like weird shit I haven't seen before. And if it's a frog stripper, then fine, it's a frog stripper. That's funny. <laughs> funny nipple tassels, and they're so cute. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm gonna send you a picture because it is like it lights me up inside i don't know how else to explain it i don't have a thing for frogs but it's truly delightful so 
moving on. I think I spent too much time on this part already. Uh, what have you been reading or watching that is not shitty? Um, I did mention fanfic. Yes. What else? There's something else that I was going to mention. Um, uh, how about a webtoon called My Vampire Roommate? I've been reading that. It's cute. That sounds familiar. Uh, it's a That's slice of life comic where like, um, this guy needs a roommate cause he's a broke substitute teacher and a vampire moves in with him. But the vampire is kind of like a knee and his parents kicked him out cause he doesn't have friends and he needs to make friends. <laughs> Aww. And so they just like become friends and it's really cute and wholesome. And if you need something to brighten up your day, uh, read it. It's nice. Um, I, I know this election, this election cycle has been rough on everybody. So go read that or my boyfriend, the Mothman, for some fun, wholesome uh, things to make you happy. <laughs> oh, I thought that was like a, one of the monster smut books I've been seeing everywhere. Oh, I can also recommend some monster smut. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I haven't read any that I'm not like, uh, like squidgy about, but I. Yeah. There's another cute one called like Monsters and Girls or something like that. It's no longer on Webtoon because Webtoon kept censoring it for some stupid reason, but uh, that one's cute as well. Um, yeah. Oh, also, that's something I keep forgetting to promote. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, uh, my webcomic's off hiatus right now. And. Yeah. Um, the art that Roman has done for these upcoming episodes is fantastic. It's so, so, so good. Um, and I'm super excited for the fact that after a year, it's finally back. Um, please read it. If, if you enjoy like supernatural sort of stuff, if you enjoy comedy and there's some horror elements as well, um, it starts off as kind of like a funny little comic, but then it, it gets like more extended storylines later on. So just please please read it. It's like my life's work. I've been working on it for five years. So <laughs> then I'm gonna, it's on webtoons, right? That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link. You and can I'm post it in the it. description. Yeah. My uh, daughter already added it to her read list. Oh, really? Or whatever. She's, she tries to tell me what she's reading. Most of the time is some sort of romance. And I'm like, mm. Mm. Yeah, there, to be fair, there are some good romances on, <laughs> um, on uh, Webtoon and, uh, and others, you know, like I, I'm ambivalent about the romance genre too. I do think that really good stories about the human experience can be told through romance. Like Pride and Prejudice was one of my favorite books for that reason. Mm -hmm. But it's also, it's got some pretty serious problems in terms of the tropes that kind of make me shy away from it, you know? <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. The book talk really is. Anyway. Uh, I just forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's good. Everything's everything's closing. My computer's going to die. Things are on fire. It's fine. Um, I can't think of what I have read. Oh, I read some a Western by an author named... Oh, he's got a pseudonym and I'm going to mess it up. I got to arc read a Western. That was actually really good. Normally not my jam. Oh, it's called The Screaming House. And I want to say it's DL. I'm going to link it on there. But that one's actually really good if anybody likes sort of a serial killer Western vibe. I haven't really read anything like that before. And then I've been reading the stories of the project that we've been working on that I haven't told anybody about. And I'm really excited for us to get it out. But I'm not going to yeah. say anything yet, necessarily. Right, we're gonna, it. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Secrets, well, we can. Secret. <laughs> I just I'll get too excited so that'll be we should bring that with the the first episode of the second season we'll bring right. that out oh it should Stay be a four tuned. person one what we should bring uh the other two contributors on and make it like four. Uh, person. yeah yeah, yeah. okay That's smart <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you for being on my season finale and for filling in for uh some of my favorite episodes i've gotten to watch by the way that blood and honey one's gonna kill me oh <laughs> <laughs> that one was a a lot of fun and i appreciate all your help in coming on i don't appreciate this movie um you're not picking the next one 
we're going to, but you have to watch Hell Comes to Frogtown. That's going to be my pick. We just, okay. that's just on a personal note. So, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be sure to um, uh, message you all of my thoughts about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Please do. Uh, and I don't even remember my own punchline at the end because I didn't make a script this time. Um, yeah. Until next time, you're impeached, fucker. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye.